The German Chancellor Olaf Scholz has explained why no fewer than 14,000 Nigerians living in the country risk deportation. Scholz said it is attributed to the spike in the number of Nigerians seeking asylum with a great number of them without identification cards and Nigerians who have behaved well in their country to benefit Nigeria. The German Chancellor added that approximately 12,500 Nigerians are in a condition of tolerance in Germany as a result of the Nigerian government's reluctance to admit people without the necessary identity documents. Speaking during a meeting with President Bola Tinubu in Abuja on Tuesday, Shoza said the current spike in Nigerians are filing initial asylum claims in 2023 has sparked worries. President Tinubu, who alluded to the potential for cooperation in order to resolve the matter of deportation, also underlined that his administration is ready to allow people to return, especially those who are recognized as fellow citizens and have behaved well. The Senate has asked the federal government to collaborate with other countries to call for a ceasefire in the Israel-Hamas conflict. Since October 7th, the Israeli military has relentlessly bombarded Gaza after Hamas militants launched an attack that left 1,400 dead in Israel, most of them civilians. According to the Hamas-run health ministry, the death toll in Gaza has surpassed 10,000 people, including more than 4,000 children. Referencing the Nigerian civil war and the related horror encountered by Nigerians, the Senate equally urged the United Nations to revisit the issue of a two-state solution as a proposed framework for resolving the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Following a motion moved by Senator Abdurrahman Karu from Kano South on Tuesday, the lawmakers condemned the killings on both sides while suing for peace. Also, the Senate said it will probe the purchase of the five billion naira presidential votes and the circumstances surrounding it. The resolution was made known by the a Senate Committee on Navy, chaired by the All Progressives Congress Senator representing Ogun East, Benga Daniel. This was made known in a statement by the media aide to the lawmaker, Steve Ulide, a copy of which was made available on Wednesday. The media has been a dog since the report on the procurement of the yacht, generating controversy with many Nigerians pointing their keys and fingers at the presidency for being insensitive. Daniel noted that the uproar over the potential acquisition of the yacht has gained substantial attention since it was first disclosed in the media. He revealed that the committee had therefore taken the initiative to investigate the circumstances and issues surrounding the controversial yacht within a concise time frame of one week. Now, the leadership of the Nigeria Labour Congress and the Trade Union Congress has declared a total nationwide strike effective next week, Tuesday, November 14, 2023. The leadership of the two unions reached the resolution after an extraordinary National Executive Council meeting on Tuesday in Abuja. The two major labor unions said nationwide mobilization of members and allies has begun immediately. The action by the organized labor followed the brutal manhandling of NLC national president Joe Ajero last week in Imo State. There had been widespread outrage by the organized labor accusing the commissioner of police in Imo State, Mohammed Badi, of complicity in the attack on Ajero in Oweri, the state capital. And 15 commissioners of police, 29 deputy commissioners of police, and 40 assistant commissioners of police have been deployed to oversee this weekend's governorship election in Imo State. The spokesperson for the State Police Command, Henry Okoye, who gave the update in an interview in Norway on Wednesday, said the police were ready for the Saturday poll. Okoye said a deputy inspector general police would be in charge of the election and would be assisted by an assistant inspector general of police. He said the state commissioner of police, Mohammed Badi, had been redeployed to the force headquarters by the inspector general of police. The police spokesperson, who added that 36 units of mobile police personnel were also deployed to the state for the election, explained that the visiting mobile police personnel would assist the 
uh, mobile officers of the command in maintaining peace and order before, during, and after the election. And now back to Abuja, the Court of Appeal has nullified the participation of the People's Democratic Party and its senatorial candidate in the February 25 National Assembly election, Napoleon Bali, for Plateau South Senatorial District on the ground of refusal to carry out a lawful order of the court. The living judgment, a three-member panel led by Justice a Williams Darudo, declared as unlawful and wasted votes cast for PDP in the election and declared the former governor of Plateau State, Simon Lalong, as the senator for the Plateau South Senatorial District. Lalong, who stood for the election on the platform of the All Progressives Congress, had come second in the February senatorial election. Justice Williams Darodo held that the PDP and its candidate have no legal ground to participate in the election, having failed to obey the judgment of a Plateau High Court that the party should conduct lawful elections for the purpose of having officers for wards, local governments, and state council. The Plateau High Court had in 2022 ordered PDP to conduct elections for the selection of officers for wards, local governments, and the state chapter of the party, which was not complied with. Let's take you to Bauchi State now, where the government has handed over the Sa Abubakar Tafar Balua International Airport to the federal government for effective management and economic development of the state. The airport, which was built in 2013 by the Isa Yuguda administration and had been managed by the Bauchi State government, was handed over to the federal government through the Airport Authority of Nigeria. Speaking at the official handover on Tuesday, at the VIP9, the managing director of FAAN, Kabe Mohammed, told journalists that the government has agreed to hand over the facility to the federal government. Mohammed has said before now the airport has been jointly operated by the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria and Dutch government, but in most recent discussions looking at the how to optimally use the airport. The Belgian government graciously accepted to cede the operation of the airport to FAN. He said they took the decision not because they cannot operate it, but they believe that handing it over to the federal government will open the state to more opportunities. The state deputy governor, Awa Jatao, said the airport was officially adopted by FAN in May this year, noting that the agency's MD and his team were in the state for the ceremonial part of the agreement. Let's take it back to the southeast now. The Commissioner for Aviation and Technology in Ebony State, Mrs. Ngazi Obichuku, has said the state government will spend 13.7 billion naira to fix the one out runway of the Chuba Okadibu International Airport on Weke. Obichuku, who stated this in Abakaleke on Tuesday, named Infrastructure Development Company as the contractor handling the project. She said the project will be completed within eight months and when completed will boost the economic viability and development of the state by a greater percentage. Obichuku said the installation of the asphalt plant is ongoing adding that the contractor has started casting the asphalt plant base before the installation of the component. She noted that the surveyor team had almost concluded its work on the Chuba Okadibu International Airport runway readings, and the government is sure that the contractor, IDC, will deliver on the quality uh, project.